Today I'm going to share how I would learn structural engineering if I were to start all over again. If you're new here, my name is Gabrielle and I'm a structural engineer based in Australia. I've been in the field for over six years now and I've had the privilege of working with and learning from hundreds of professionals in the construction and engineering industry. And I remember when I first started, I felt lost in a sea of information and I didn't know where to focus. So in this video, I'm going to tell you all the things that will actually be useful and make a difference in your life. So let's start with learn engineering fundamentals and software together. Let me give you an example. Let's say I'm designing a portal frame. I would hand sketch that portal frame, analyze it and design it by hand. Then I would choose any software I have access to and carry out an analysis and design in the software. I would compare both methods and see if I would get similar results. And this way, you're not only learning the fundamentals, but also how to use the software effectively. When I first started, I didn't fully appreciate the value of combining these approaches. And by doing both simultaneously, you get a deeper understanding of how theoretical principles translate into practical software applications. Plus, it helps you troubleshoot issues more effectively since you understand the underlying mechanics and don't get bogged down by choosing the most perfect software. Use whatever you have access to. I personally started with a basic 2D analysis software called F2 because it was free and easy to use. Number two, practical experience and sketching. If I could go back in time, I would focus on two key areas, learning how to read and create structural drawings and learning about construction. These two skills will ensure that you design practical and realistic structures and construction drawings that can actually be built on site. One thing I wish I had done earlier is sketching structural details, just like my friends studying architecture did. My architect friends are great at sketching and drawings and I wish I had trained this skill earlier. It's amazing how much you learn by sketching out your ideas. Often it's only when you put your ideas on paper that you realize whether they will work or not. And this approach also improves your ability to communicate your ideas effectively with architects and builders. Number three, focus more on preparation. I remember in my first structural engineering job, I had to design a house and I felt overwhelmed at first. But by making sure I knew how to design the main structural elements of a house, like pad footings, board piers, slabs, beams and columns, I was better prepared to handle the project. And this preparation meant that when my senior engineer explained the design and what they wanted from me, I wasn't overwhelmed by the tasks. Instead, I was ready to tackle them because I knew how to design the basic elements. If you are at uni, maybe take some time before the lectures to have an idea about the topics that will be discussed in the lecture and then you will be able to ask the right questions. There's a quote by Abraham Lincoln that says, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the ax. It's not just about knowing what you do, but being ready to do it effectively. Number four, teaching others teaches you the most. If I could go back in time, I would make it a priority to teach my friends everything I learned. Teaching others is one of the most effective ways to reinforce your own understanding of a subject. I remember my university days, especially before exams, when we would all study in groups. Every time I taught someone a topic, I ended up learning something new myself. The act of teaching allows you to tap into other people's curiosity. Their questions often raise points you might not have considered before. 
And when you explain a concept to someone else, you're forced to break it down into simpler terms, which solidifies your grasp on the material. Not to mention that engaging in discussions with your mates will expose you to different perspectives. And that's basically what I do on this YouTube channel. I share my experiences and ideas, and by doing this, I reinforce my understanding and also learn from you guys. Number five, start internships earlier. I would have started internships earlier, especially in small engineering offices. Internships teach you how to become a problem solver. I remember during my internships at smaller engineering offices, I had to face projects that required me to identify the loads, choose the materials, choose the engineering layout, all on my own. There was no university professor telling me to design a bane with certain dimensions, and load it in a certain way. I had to come up with the dimension of the beams. I had to come up with the loads. So basically I had to come up with all the questions and the answers at the same time. And this experience taught me more about problem solving and project management than any classroom lecture could. When it comes to the size of the company, I think working in smaller offices is particularly beneficial because you get to see the entire project life Life cycle and you might even receive personalized mentorship because it's a, it's a smaller environment which I think it's incredibly valuable number six develop soft skills I would have focused on developing soft skills especially public speaking if I could go back in time I would ensure that every presentation I gave was as engaging as a TED talk I remember at university, most of us would simply read off the slides during presentations. And to be honest, in my opinion, this wasn't entirely our fault because the school system demands public speaking from us, but it doesn't teach us how to do it effectively. Even in high school, we're often asked to present in front of the class without being taught the necessary skills to do so. And the result of that is many of us became introverted and afraid of public speaking. I've had numerous occasions in my career where I've had to present a project to a group of people and I wish I had practiced this skill more when I first started. Beyond public speaking, you should develop skills in sales and marketing. Whether you're looking for a job or trying to attract clients, you need to be able to market yourself in your business. If you're applying for jobs and don't have much experience or you have as much experience as the other candidates, the ability to sell yourself will probably be the defining factor. There's a significant aspect of marketing and sales in engineering, but unfortunately, it's not emphasized enough in university education. So you gotta do the work yourself. I can guarantee you that 99% of people watching this video will not put in the work, but that 1% who does it will stand out and they will probably be your boss in the future. Number seven, keep an open mind and be curious. While you might have a clear idea of what you want to do, I think it's essential to explore all disciplines. I'll give you an example. I initially wanted to work as a geotechnical engineer. I even did my thesis in that field, but here I am now working as a structural engineer. So be curious and I would be more excited about solving problems. Don't just seek the solution, seek to understand why the solution is needed. Take notes of the topics you like and dislike and let your curiosity guide you.